Today we're going to be talking about the spinal cord. And in order to figure out where the spinal cord is, we have to first look at the vertebrae. This is a cervical vertebra, and we know that because of the bifurcation here. Uh, just to kind of give you some ideas, that's the spinous process. These are the lamina. These are the superior articular surfaces here and here. Of course, this is the body or centrum here. So here is the spinal cord itself, right here. And you can appreciate that there's gray matter and white matter in the spinal cord. Now on this model, the gray matter looks brown and the white matter looks off-white, but that's okay. Notice that there's this little area where the two wings of this butterfly essentially are connected. And this is referred to as the gray commissure. In the center of the gray commissure is the central canal. The central canal uh, contains cerebral spinal fluid. And of course, this is the same cerebral spinal fluid we would find in the brain. In effect, it's a continuation of the ventricle system. The gray matter consists predominantly of unmyelinated axons, neurons, and dendrites, whereas the white matter is the myelinated axons plus the connective tissues that go with it. You can also see a couple slits here. This one here is referred to as the anterior median fissure, and this one here is the posterior median sulcus, and they basically are a result of embryonic development. If we take a look, too, at these wiry structures here, these are the roots, uh, which are essentially axons traveling to the gray matter, and from this side we have the posterior part, which we will call dorsal, and so these are the dorsal roots, and this is the dorsal root ganglion. All right, so here is, again, what we refer to as the dorsal root ganglion, coming up here to be the dorsal root, and then over here is the ventral root. Now, the ventral root and the dorsal root come together, essentially, to form a nerve, which is right here. And the nerve splits into a posterior ramus, and an anterior ramus. This is called the dorsal horn. So dorsal horn is sensory, ventral horn is motor. So sensory cell bodies essentially send signals to the spinal cord here at the dorsal horn. Down here we have the ventral horn, and the ventral horn is sending signals away from the spinal cord. It is motor in that regard, so down it goes in the ventral root, and travels this direction uh, the opposite way. And you can tell that uh, these two are going to meet eventually to form, of course, a nerve. So to recap, this is the dorsal horn, the ventral horn, and here is something called the lateral horn. The lateral horn is also motor associated with the sympathetic nervous system. All right, one more thing. We should take a look at the coverings associated with the spinal cord. And so the first covering that we see in our model is this sort of gray one right here. And this represents the end ostium of the bone. Below that is going to be a layer of fat and blood vessels, which we refer to as the epidural space. This is where you would get your epidural if you were going to get one, not necessarily in the neck, of course, but uh, nonetheless, this is the general region where you would get the epidural. And then here is the first meninge, this is referred to as the dura mater. Dura mater literally translates to tough mother. And the tough mother is essentially a protective sac around the spinal cord and for that matter the brain. It's continuous. Over here we have the subarachnoid mater and um, our sub, I'm sorry, the arachnoid mater and the subarachnoid space. The arachnoid mater uh, literally translates to the spidery mother. And there is essentially spidery connective tissues here which cerebral spinal fluid courses through. Below that is pia mater. Now, pia mater is not found on the developed brain, but it is found on the spinal cord. So this is honest to God pia mater here, and that means the tender mother. If we come over here, we can see this little uh, connection here, and this is simply called a sympathetic ramus. It is connecting with a bulge, which we refer to as the sympathetic chain ganglion. Here it is. There's the bulge, which is the sympathetic chain ganglion. 
And as you'll discover, these are all connected together, forming a chain which triggers the sympathetic nervous system essentially simultaneously when it's activated. In addition, we have some blood vessels. These are vertebral blood vessels, and this is the vertebral artery and the vertebral vein. Uh, these are traveling through, of course, the other identifi identifying feature that we find on the cervical vertebrae, and that would be the transverse foramen. All right, well, that's pretty much it for the spinal cord today. Thanks so much.